Hiya, hiya, everybody. How are y'all doing? I'm Lulu with Lulu's Thrifting World, AKA Lourdes, or as other people will call me Lourdes, because that's a Latino name. But anyways, I'm here today to talk to you about my hysterectomy story, part one, as you can see in the title, but um, I'm not here for any unboxings or to talk about reselling, or maybe just a little bit, but I'm here to share with you all my story of my hysterectomy um, that I had on May 23rd, exactly six weeks ago today, because today is my six weeks post-op from the date of my surgery. So I, I wrote notes, so I won't go off track, but um, hopefully my story will help anybody who's watching this who's about to get a hysterectomy because when I was about to get my hysterectomy I searched for stories on YouTube because I wanted to see how other women felt and what they went through and I want to share my my personal story on how I felt and what I went through uh, so I had a hysterectomy because I had fibroids in my uterus that had caused heavy bleeding terrible cramps and my bleeding lasted for several days. The year 2018, the year I turned 40, was the year that the long days of period started. I went from my normal seven days of period to like 10, 11 days, and then from 10, 11 days to 20 plus days. And it was terrible. <laughs> it was annoying, it was terrible. Um, it interrupted my work. I remember I'd call out a lot or request days off when I knew when my period was gonna come, which was kind of tough because my period wasn't always on time every month, like a normal period would be. But my doctor at the time recommended an IUD instead of hormones or uh, birth control pills because I have high blood pressure, so she highly recommended IUD but I did not want that at all. I kept telling her I don't want it. I just didn't like the idea of having an object in my uterus. I didn't like that at all. So her, this one gynecologist, her other option for me was to just continue taking my iron pills and vitamin C faithfully. And when I was having painful period cramps to take Tylenol or ibuprofen to help with the bleeding, and uh, the cramping and that's what I did. And I remember at the time I was losing weight and exercising a lot. I like to hike. So I remember at the time I was like hiking like every day um, and that seemed to help maybe just a little bit, but not really. And I just lived with it. I just lived with having heavy painful periods and long periods. The 20 day plus periods wasn't every month. Like it start, like it would be like a few months, 20 plus days, and then other months it would be 10, 11 days, 15 days, 16 days. It was just all over the place. It was terrible. And it didn't just affect me, but it affected my husband, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so uh, that's the reason why I had my surgery. Though I did try a uh, scraping of my uterus back in 2021 a different gynecologist because I had changed gynecologists she recommended um, the scraping of my uterus and I went ahead and did that and it didn't really help the only thing I did is maybe shorten my periods to 10 11 days but I was still having long periods heavy periods but not as heavy as it was before I had that scraping because I remember um, in 20 21 yeah june of 2021 me and my husband were going to monterey to have a father's day weekend like i went ahead and got us a hotel and made reservations at our favorite restaurant and we were driving and i was the one driving because i wanted to be in charge like oh like let me take care of you husband <laughs> anyways and uh I was bleeding so much like I it was like a faucet of blood like my vagina was like a faucet of blood like so much blood was coming out and I had a super tamp on and a super long 
pad, maxi pad on. And we had to stop off closest uh, bathroom and thank God I had extra clothes in the trunk because you know we had our night over bags for the hotel. It was awful. It was bad. We still did our thing. We still went to the ho to the hotel. We still went to the restaurant. But boy, that was awful. I, f I remember feeling so weak and I was so sad um, that that had happened. And then that's when I had told my doctor about it and that's when she recommended the scraping. And I did the scraping and it only helped where my period lasted 10, 11 days, 12 days. And my period wasn't a faucet of blood coming out. So here we are 2023. Now this year, January, December 2022, January this year, I was having almost 30 day periods. And it was crazy. Now that was really putting a dent in my life because I would literally just not do things with family. Like my mom would, my mom is Monterey, so she would be like, Mija, you wanna come over? Why don't you spend the night, you know, and come and hang out with me, keep me company. And, but if I had my period, I wouldn't go because I don't want to like stain her sheets. I'm being honest here, dude. Like it was just awful. Like I didn't want to be in uncomfortable pain or stain or I just wasn't happy. I would, so I would just cancel a lot or I would cancel spending the night, but then I would go over her house for like a little bit and then come back home. But I uh, requested days off a lot, like a lot. Um, because it was just bad I, at work. I work at a grocery store, so I'm always on my feet, standing all day and working out. I'm working out, like lifting up boxes, cases, up, bending down, bending up, like helping customers, you know. So it just affected me a lot. And then of course it affected my sex life because I wasn't having um, a lot of sex with my husband. We Our intimacy time wasn't how it used to be which really, really sucked. And it was frustrating, not just for me, dealing with the whole period thing, but it was also frustrating for my husband because he wants to like be intimate, but we can't. And so um, long story short, I ended up deciding to do a hysterectomy because my, my doctor, my gynecologist asked me, hey, maybe have you thought about having a hysterectomy? And, and it happened so fast because the hysterectomy wasn't something that I thought of myself and said, you know what, I'm gonna get rid of my uterus and just have a hysterectomy. Like it wasn't like that, it just happened. So, and then when it happened, I was emotional about it. I remember when I decided, yes, I'm gonna have this hysterectomy and then the appointment was made and everything. I was sad. I was sad because number one, like I wasn't gonna have my uterus in, in me anymore. And I felt like that was like a woman thing. Um, like it's a woman thing part that's being taken out. And number two, that's where my baby, my son who's 22, he's my only one where he grew. And I don't know, number three, like I really thought I was gonna have a baby with my husband. My, me and my husband don't have like our own child. My son, Cody, my husband raised him since he was six years old. So, and my husband doesn't have kids of his own from, you know, the past or anything like that. So it just, you know, it is what it is. It didn't happen. It wasn't God's plan for us. God has other plans for us. And um, I went through the crying and all that, I cried a lot. I went through it, I went through the crying. It was just like a moment over it. And then I just started to um, prepare. I had two months to prepare for my surgery uh, from the time I decided and made the appointment to the day of, of my surgery. And during that time, I was nesting. So I would throw shit out. <laughs> I would like go through my stuff and just get rid of stuff that I wasn't using anymore. Just cleaning all this stuff. I made sure to stock up on bunny. We have two bunny rabbits. They're so cute. Midnight and Coco. And I just made sure I had all their food, their hay, their pellets, their treats. 
and just made sure they were stocked up on all that stuff. And I made sure to stock up in the kitchen with the food. And I made sure I took care of my DM DMV because I had to renew my driver's license. So I, I wanted to make sure I had that done. And I made an appointment with my regular doctor to go over my high blood pressure because I have high blood pressure. So I wanted to make sure my high blood pressure was on point prior to um, having this surgery, cleaning, stocking, and I call it nesting. I mean, I know I'm not like giving birth to a baby, but um, you know, I was gonna have my uterus taken out. So, and, and I knew that after my surgery, I was not gonna be able to lift more than 10 pounds and that I wasn't gonna be able to bend and up and down and just do certain things. So I was doing all of that. The day of the surgery came um and i will say the day before my surgery i went on a hike with my husband at our favorite spot over here by our house we have all these hills that we hike up and down from it's so beautiful and i knew that i wasn't going to be able to hike like that or do things like that after my surgery so literally the day before my surgery we went on a hike and it was awesome and i'm so glad that we did and like a few days prior to, I was like stretching, stretching out. I don't know, I just wanted to be prepared. I was super nervous and worried. I've never been put under before like that for surgery. So I didn't know what was gonna happen. And everybody told me that it will be fine, that they're just gonna put the oxygen mask on you and you're just gonna pass out. And that's exactly what happened and I passed out. But yeah, so the day of my surgery was on two, on a Tuesday, May 23rd at like 10.30 or 11 o'clock in the morning. And I went there with my husband. He waited with me in the waiting room. The nurse called me. My husband, he couldn't come in with me, so he just went back home. And then I just went in there by myself and the nurses took very good care of me. Um, it took all my vitals. They put, had me put that gown on and the net hat, put the, like, the IV stuff in, and they were just very nice um, and gentle with me. And then I went in for surgery. There was like, oh God, there were so many doctors in the surgery room, like probably like 10 people, I don't know, seven to 10. And they were playing like blasting music. Like they were, they were getting ready, you know? But I just remember going in, sitting down, they put on the mask and I knocked out. And right before I woke up, I had like a dream that people were all dressed like in bright clothing, smiling at me and like reaching down their arms at me to get up. And then I just woke up, I had the mask on me. And I remember like, I felt I, I needed to take like a deep breath. And I kept telling them like this, like, oh, like get it out. And they did, they took it out and I had like phlegm in my throat. So um, they gave me water. The nurse who was taking care of me, who was a, a male, he was a guy. Uh, he asked me if I wanted coffee or if I wanted a Coca-Cola. And I said, sure. <laughs> so he gave me a super cold Coca-Cola with a straw. And I don't know, that was kind of comforting. And I just remember waking up and just looking around everywhere and the nurse was taking my vitals and he told me that he wanted to make sure that I peed a certain amount before I was uh, ready to go home. With my surgery, it was going home the same day. And I forgot to mention in the beginning of this video, they took out my uterus, fallopian tubes, and cervix. I was able to keep both of my ovaries because the doctor said I'm too young, <laughs> which is fine. I'm glad I kept my ovaries because that was one of my main concerns was hormones and like the want and the feel to want to have sex again. And I just didn't want my hormones to be messed with. And thank God I was able to keep my ovaries. So that was a good thing. Anyway, so the nurse guy, he gave me the Coca-Cola. He wanted to make sure I peed right. So finally I got up and he walked with me to go to the bathroom and he was watching me go pee and I thought it was like the weirdest thing ever. Like, because he was a guy, you know, I never really had like a guy nurse, but I was like, whatever, like I need to, I need to make sure I pee um, before I can go home. I peed and when I peed, it stung. 
and I peed slowly, but I peed. And he was like, okay, great. We called your husband. He's gonna be here soon to pick you up. And he did say that I was doing well because of the way I was walking. So I thought that was great. They sent me home with two cooling pads and I already had all my prescriptions from like prior to my surgery. My Me and my doctor had a pre-op appointment and she prescribed me all the medications that I needed. She prescribed me gas tabs um, because they had to use, put like this gas inside of you to blow up your belly. And they did, they gave me four incisions around my belly button. And um, so she gave me Tylenol and Ibuprofen and Oxycodone and the little tiny pills to help with nausea. So after uh, I gathered all my stuff, everything, I got dressed. The nurse was very nice and helpful, helped me get dressed. I wore slip-on shoes because, you know, you can't bend down to tie your shoes. Shoot, I can't bend down now to tie my shoes. I still have to like um, cross my legs over to tie my shoes. But anyways, um, my husband was out there. He picked me up and I was still like kind of loopy from the drugs or whatever. And then I just came home and then I just put on my pajamas. Thankfully it wasn't hot. It was nice and cool weather, like almost cold because I remember it being kind of cloudy. And I just put on my pajamas, had the bed all comfy. And the only thing that I ate that day was chicken kettle soup and saltine crackers and tea. And that was the only thing. And I cried a little bit, but not all crazy. And I remember that night I woke up a few times. I have to take blood pressure medication. My blood pressure medication makes me go pee a lot. And I remember waking up, my bladder was full, but dude, like it hurt. My bladder was so full of pee that it hurt because everything, my abdomen area, like all in there, it just hurt. And I remember when I woke up too from the surgery, I felt the incision inside the vagina area where they, they stitched me up. It was painful. I'm not going to lie. It was painful. And they gave me some like, um, what did he say he gave me in like my IV? He gave me some pain medication. Um, and I also felt that there was no more uterus. So weird. But yeah, I felt like there was, I can tell that there was no more uterus. Like I can't even tell right now I don't have a uterus. That was my experience on surgery day. And I used a heating pad and a cooling pad at the same time. So. That was the day of my surgery and my husband helped me a lot. If you're gonna have a hysterectomy surgery, you gotta have help with you because you can't lift anything heavy. You can't even bend down. You can walk, but I mean, thankfully with me because it was, it was a laparoscopic um, hysterectomy surgery. So they didn't have to like cut my abdomen area. They just did the, the four incisions and then inside my vagina, they, you know, sewed it up. You're gonna need the help. Honestly, like my husband helped me so much. Thankfully, he was able to stay home with me. He already let work know that he was gonna stay home with me to take care of me. And I'm so glad he did. He actually ended up staying home with me for two weeks. And he only worked like two days out of the two weeks. So he was home with me a lot. And he just cooked breakfast for me, dinner, made coffee, brought me my water when I needed it. I, he made sure my heating pad was all hooked up, drove me around whatever I needed. That's where the reselling part came in because I still had sales coming in. Not like a whole ton lot, but I still had sales coming in. So he would go and get me my inventory, like the number inventory thing. Like I would tell him where to go and he would get it. He There was like two boxes he needed to tape up. So he did that for me and he would drive me to the post office and he would get out and drop it off. Like he did everything. Like I am so thankful for William um, because he really truly helped me. And then I had my son Cody, he was going to work every day, but there there was times where he helped me if William couldn't help me. Um, definitely get have somebody there with you if you're gonna have a hysterectomy surgery. And the things that helped me, these are the two, um, 
teas that I used. I used the ginger tea um, to help me with nausea. I only got nauseous the first day I came back, I remember, and I did not want to throw up. I was like, hell no, I'm not gonna throw up. <laughs> so I drank the, the ginger tea and um, and I took the little medicine pill. I, didn't, I don't know the name of it, I forgot, but I took that and then I just went to sleep and it was gone. But, um, and then I took the gas X to help me with the gas because I had gas for four to five days. I was belching more than passing gas through my other end. And then I had to take the, um, I don't know if you can see that here, of uh, stool softeners. This is the gas relief, I bought that at Walmart. And then I also bought, it says Clear Lax, but it's the same as Miralax to help with my stools. I didn't have my first stool till three days after my surgery. And it was fine, thank God. There was no constipation. I was able to go no problem. But, and then even after the first time, I still continued to take my um, Miralax and my stool softeners. Drink lots of water. You got to drink your water, drink lots and lots of water. And also to the one thing that helped me, um, it was like a comfort thing. And also for the nausea, that one first day was the uh, saltine crackers. I had saltine crackers with me. And yeah, that's about it. And then I'm looking at my little bunnies. They're both like looking at me right now. That is how everything went. There's just so much to talk about with this hysterectomy stuff. I'm telling you, um, it's no joke. Oh yeah, my birthday was one week after my surgery. So I told everybody that my birthday gift was having my uterus removed so I wouldn't have periods anymore. It was fun. My mom and my dad and my sister came over with cake and sandwiches, chips and jaritos. <laughs> I love the tamarindo flavor of jaritos. So that is my story so far. It's a pretty long story. I will say like, those first two weeks right after my surgery, I just couldn't bend for anything. I was uncomfortable. I did walk around my house in the backyard and like up the street and then back down the street with my husband um, just to get rid of the gas, get the blood flowing. And the doctor will say, walk. I'm gonna go ahead and just end it right there. I wanna hear what you guys, if you had a hysterectomy, did you cry and get all emotional when you made the decision not to, you know, have your uterus anymore, to have the uterus taken out? Did it affect your sex life, your experience with all of that? I'll be coming back to you guys with my rest of my hysterectomy story to let you guys how I'm doing. And I hope my story has encouraged you um, but please leave a comment if you have any advice, suggestions, if you have experienced the same things that I've experienced. It's just kind of nice to know that I'm not alone in this, that, you know, it's just something that some women have to go through. But anyways, thank you guys for listening to my story as long as it's been already. And I hope you guys are having a great 4th of July and I will see you guys later. Bye.